great Indian sage once said, the world is illusion. Only true self is real. The world is true self. Zen means understanding my true self. What am I? When I was born, where did I come from? When I die, where do I go? Now, we are living in this world, very chaotic. Many things coming, going, coming, going, changing, 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 non-stop. So much change in movement, so much chaos, so many shadows. But that's just the outside form of this world. It's an illusion. Like shadows, like the appearances in a dream, this outer world is just an illusion. It's a temporary combination of light and shadow, of name and form of time and space, all of it created by thinking. So this is just an illusion. When we believe this illusion, this illusion can catch us and control us. That's the way most of us live. The next line is, only true self is When the Buddha stepped out of his mother's side, when the Buddha was born, according to tradition, he took seven steps and said, in all the heavens above and in all the lands below, only I am holy. Only this true nature is real. So in all the cosmos above, with supernovas and black holes, planets, stars, exploding nebulae, the creation and death of universes. And in all the lands below, all of the cultures, civilizations, books, movies, artifacts of civilizations, under all of that and above all of this, there's only one thing that is truly significant. There's only one thing that truly, yeah, exists. Only one thing is truly real. It's our true nature. Only one thing is truly worth study. Then the third line. This whole world is true self. This entire reality is nothing more than mind. So in Zen we say, mind is Buddha, Buddha is mind. Everything is created by mind alone. So what is this mind? Every day we say I, 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 my, 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 me, me, me. Hundreds of times every day, thousands of times. Even in our sleep, we're saying, I. Oh, does that person like me? What does that person say? Oh, this is that person I saw in high school I didn't like. I, 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 me, 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 around and around and around and around and around and around and around. Non-stop. We even wake up from an eight-hour sleep and we're still tired because this I is rotating around and around and around, completely created by thinking. So where does I? So philosophy explains I. All religions talk about I. Zen teaching is insight into the nature of where does this I come from? So this body is American. I have a Buddhist name, an American name. But all of these are just created by thinking. My parents gave me one name. My teacher gave me another name. 
This body appears and disappears, appears and disappears, appears and disappears. But there's one thing that never appears and never disappears. It never comes, it never goes. It's never born, it never dies. It's not male or female, it's not pure or impure. It never appears or disappears. So what is this thing? It's not even a thing. So Zen meditation is not a religion. It's not an ideology or a creed. It's not a dogma. It's not a belief system. It's not even a way of life. Zen just means meditation. Meditation just means looking. What am I? So when we sit there in formal meditation, sitting in this basic posture, legs crossed or sitting in a chair, the body erect, but not tight, clear, straight. Centered in our breathing, and our breathing happening in our center, this area below my navel. Eyes down, half open, gazing at the floor. Not looking or searching, gazing lightly at the floor, eyes open, ears open, nose open, tongue, body, mind. So in this position, in this basic architecture, we sit with full attention to the breathing, natural, clear, not forced, not some sort of artificial zen, breathing that we've gotten from some samurai movie. Zen breathing is very natural breathing, the breathing of a baby. Centered in our tanjan, our hara, just below the navel. Body is straight, not tight. Head is upright, not stiff. Eyes half opened with awareness in the breath. What is breathing? What controls my breath? What hears that sound? Who smells the incense? Who? What? What is it? So we turn, 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 turn the view. Turn the view around. All day we're looking is outside into things that are coming, going, coming, going, coming, going, endlessly. It's only the appearance of an unreal world. So in this basic posture, and it can happen in a chair, it can happen lying down, watching the breath, aware of the breath, keeps us in this moment, right here, right now. Then with this awareness, we turn, we turn awareness to the source of awareness. What am I? And when we do that, when we seriously look with courage, not following our thinking, not following the flow of memories, also not ignoring them, not pushing them away. Zen does not mean stopping your thinking. Stopping your thinking is not meditation. You can't stop your thinking. Rather, turn back. What is thinking? What is thinking? Who is thinking? Who thinks? So when a thought arises, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Return to the source. Who is thinking? Where does, where, where, where does the thinking come from? Where? What is the source? That investigation 
When you really look, that investigation leads to your thinking can't, your thinking it can't go, your thinking can't go farther. Your thinking right there, right there. Before thinking arises again, before thinking, there's no coming, no going. There's no male, no female. No pure, no impure. No God, no Buddha. No yesterday, no tomorrow. It never appears or disappears. It's not male or female. And as I said, it was never born and it never dies. That, it has no name and no form. Some people call it Buddha or God or consciousness or the absolute, Christ nature, holiness, spirit, the soul, Brahman, in the words of the Indian sage who gave us the poem. But it has no name, no form. The minute you call it something, it's already a mistake. It's already a mistake. So meditation means look. It's not even a thing. So meditation is this action of being. To be with the breath and to look at what am I? And when you really ask, and you really look, not as a question, what am I, as a conceptual intellectual exercise, when you really look, all thinking is completely, in that instant, cut off. At that point, be for thinking. My teacher, the great Zen master Sung San, for teaching purposes, called it don't know. Christian mystics used to call it not knowing. A cloud of unknowing. Osho Rajneesh called it no mind. Some people call it beginner's mind. But it has no name, has no form. These are just teaching words. So meditation means being with this awareness, the very source of awareness. Thinking coming, thinking going, leave it alone. The great Suzuki Roshi once said, in your meditation, leave the back door and the front door open. Let thinking come and go. Just don't serve it tea. Just don't give tea to your thinking, because then it wants to stay. So meditation means leave it alone. Leave the back door and the front door open. Don't close off anything. Rather, return to breathing. Return to breathing. Natural, effortless breathing in your center and this investigation. What am I? Then this don't know mind gets bigger, 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 bigger. Actually, it can't get bigger or smaller. It's infinite in time and space. But your awareness of it grows deeper and deeper and stronger. Then every moment is just this don't know mind moment. That is.